when we decide to practice, it's a big decision. We take into account our values about what's the best use of our time, what's the best use of our life. And we decide that because the mind is so central to our lives, we need to train the mind. That's a big decision. However, it gets carried through with lots of little decisions. Like right now, as you meditate, breath comes in, you decide to stay with us, this breath. Then the next breath comes in, you decide to stay with that breath. A fantasy comes up, and you have to decide whether or not to go with the fantasy. A thought about yesterday, a thought about tomorrow. And it's here where the issues of complacency come in. As the Buddha pointed out many times, complacency is our big enemy as meditators. He said that his awakening depended on two attitudes, both of which tackled complacency head on. One is to be not content with the skillful qualities he had developed. In other words, he didn't just say, well, this is good enough for now, I'll just stop here. He said if there was something better for the mind to attain, something higher, something more refined, he would keep going for it until there was nothing more to attain. That's when he stopped. The second quality was relentless effort. Now, this doesn't mean pushing yourself to the breaking point, but it means taking the attitude of a marathon runner, not knowing how to pace yourself, but pacing yourself in such a way that you complete the course. Keep on going. So there are little decisions we make all the time. But is the breath good enough? Is your concentration good enough? You want to look around, see, look around in the mind to see if there's anything at all that needs improvement. If you find something, you work on that. As the Buddha said, your attitude for the little things in the mind like this should be like that of a person whose head is on fire. It doesn't have to be a big fire. Just say that one square inch of your scalp is on fire. That's plenty enough. You want to do what you can to put the fire out. He says, you bring all your mindfulness and alertness and effort, your dedication, all to putting out that fire. Now, with some of the problems of the mind, they're like a slow burn. You can't expect them to be put out immediately. It's like the peat moss burns they have up in Alaska. They go underground, and it looks like they're out for a while, and then after the winter passes, they come back up to the top again and continue burning. So in cases like that, you have to do what you can, not only to put out the surface fire, but to dig down inside to see what else is burning down inside. This takes time, it takes dedication, but it's, again, it's a matter of little decisions made again and again and again. Just, I'm going to stick with this, stick with this, stick with this, not let this go. And as when, say, during a mathematical problem and you realize that the answer isn't coming, you put it aside. but Part of your mind is still working on it, and you give the mind a rest. This is one of the reasons why we practice concentration so much, is to get the mind well rested to do its work. So it's this ability to see that anything impinging on the mind that's causing any stress, anything that's darkening the mind, anything that's less than skillful in the mind. You have to be determined that one way or another you're going to deal with it. And these little decisions that we keep making, the decision to say, when you're meditating on your own, after you've left here, you go back to your resting spot. You say, well, I can meditate until it's time to go to bed. 
And the first impulse to go to bed, are you going to give in to that? Are you going to say, let's go a little bit longer? Let's go a little bit longer. When you can, you're doing walking meditation. And you've set a, a time for yourself to do it. And then you find at the end the meditation is going well. Well, should we do it a little bit longer? Give it a try. And it's those little bits, because part of the mind will say those little bits are not important, but it's those little bits that are important. And don't listen to the voice that says they're not. So even if you add just five minutes to your meditation, or if you're just a little more strict with yourself about getting engaged in conversations when you could be focusing more on your practice. It's those little decisions that add up, because you're creating habits in the mind. And it's part of an ongoing discussion inside about how serious are you about the practice. We're talking today about how devas get complacent. They can hear the Dharma. But then there's the attitude, well, things are kind of comfortable right now. Let's allow things to be comfortable. There's no need to push. And as a result, long periods of time can go by before they actually practice. So time gets frittered away in little bits. And it's those little bits that, if you didn't fritter them away, would add up to something good. So remember, the little decisions are being made. Try to tackle your complacency with the same two attitudes that the Buddha tackled his. In other words, learn how to keep in mind that no matter how good things are in the mind, you're going to keep looking for some way to make them better. Again, this requires pacing yourself so that your effort, which is the second quality, the effort to go against that attitude is, well, I can always do it some other time. You don't know if you'll have another time. You do have this time, so make, the use, make use of this time. And if the issues in the mind are long-term, deep issues, well, just keep that added in mind. You've got to chip away, chip away, chip away at them. Pace yourself so you can keep at it. So if you can chip away at your complacency, there comes a point where you hit a seam and it breaks open. And things can open up in ways that you wouldn't expect, but it's because you're focusing on the details of your decisions that you're going to see this. We've mentioned this in the past. You begin to realize more and more that you have freedom of choice. So take advantage of that freedom. Because as you explore freedom of choice, you begin to realize more and more how to expand your range of opportunities, your range of alternatives. And it's right in there that you're going to find a freedom that goes beyond freedom of choice. Pay attention to the details, and things open up. So don't be heedless of your time, and don't be heedless of your little decisions. Because that big decision you made to practice can live on only in the little decisions that you make moment to moment. So keep an eye on them. Make sure they're heading in the direction you really want.